Hi, hi. I'm still me, Nico. Um, so I have been doing as much research as possible and I have hit a brick wall. Uh, today we're going to talk about Louis Chauvin. And he was a ragtime composer. Uh, he, he was born in the late 1800s and died in the early 1900s. Uh, during the ragtime explosion, like the, the, you couldn't go anywhere to any bar without a ragtime composer or, or, or like a juke joint, they would have a, another ragtime band playing there or the blues, you know, um, it was just saturated. That was the type of music that was playing everywhere. That being said, Louis was very young and he kind of embraced the whole rock star lifestyle that he was living because during that time, he was pretty much the rock star of his time. You know what I mean? Like, the the music that he was making was the music that everyone wanted to hear. Being so young, being so rash and impulsive, he um kind of almost wrote himself out of history, if you will. Because when the time came and he was able to record his music, he never bothered to. Um, he never sat down with anyone to do it. He would sit and, and compose with everyone all the time. And, and he would play his music because he loved doing so. And he enjoyed the fringe benefits of that type of stardom. Um, which is clear by the, the um, how he died. He was, um... You know, there, there are quite a few different theories on how he died. Let me just, uh, okay. He died in 1908 from starvation from coma. Okay, that is the technical reason. Uh, the doctors think that it might have been multiple sclerosis. Back then it was a little bit difficult to tell being 1908 and all. Um, others say that it was a uh, syphilis induced issue and yet another person has chimed in with their thoughts on how it could have been sickle cell anemia which went undetected during that time very often and there was a, a huge uh, surge of, of patients coming in with um, symptoms of uh, sickle cell anemia that, that had gone untreated because they didn't know what it was at the time so there's that so make of that what you will I seem I happen to think that it was likely to have been the syphilis that put him into the coma and he died of starvation from that he was a happy guy he was a drunk he lived the life of a libertine you know he was pretty much the rock star of his day and age and he enjoyed collaborating with everyone he didn't he didn't really care for having to record things for posterity he enjoyed living in the now so much more than anything else and that's why his music while it's i'm sure it gets played here and there now and again it's uh probably more a rendition by one of his friends or someone who knew him during that time and not directly his song necessarily except for the heliotrope bouquet which is um, the one song he did get to record I've heard it not quite my style but I could see why it was something that kind of caught the world off guard during that time and um, I don't know. He was just such. He really was such a. Uh, he really was just such a rock star of his time. 1908. Could he possibly have been the first rock star? I don't know. I do know, however, that he was the second person inducted into the 27 Club. And that's sad. That's incredibly sad. I also know that. Um, uh, 
there was a, hold on, there was a documentary done of one of his friends. I believe it was Scott Joplin. And he was, he was kind of featured in it a bit. And um, they gave some of the details of his life there too. But um, it wasn't really about him. Because again, there wasn't really much to go on. And, and I really, really dove into this topic. You don't understand. I dove in for over a month. It it was really plaguing me. And, and I couldn't find any more information than what I've given you now. Louis Chauvin was a rock star, but he was a private rock star. Private life, you know. And it's incredibly sad that he died at the age that he did. I can imagine that he that he could have probably really, I mean, he already revolutionized uh, the the ragtime uh, music, but he could have revolutionized the entire era had he continued to live on. You know. Wonder what kind of, uh, what kind of permanent mark that he would have made on the world. Not that he hasn't already, but, you know. Okay. Next episode in this series is going to be on Robert Johnson. And I have an overabundance of information on the man. I have watched the Crossroads. I, I have, there's so much. There's so much. And and while I link all the information that I use in the, the, the description, honestly speaking, I think this is going to be like a full encyclopedia of links in the description. And I apologize for that in advance. But for right now, I'm just going to say goodnight, have fun, be safe, be well, and we will talk soon.